Heartbeat Alaska is made possible by Kupik Carlisle Transportation, your full-service transportation and logistics company. And a special thank you to Scan Home and Scan Office Furnishings. And thank you, Alaska Commercial Company, for your support. Hello, everyone. This is Jeannie Green. Because of the recent fire in Hooper Bay, we changed scheduling very quickly in our re-airing an older program, a program that visits the village of Hooper Bay and allows you to meet the good people who live there. Recently, a fire devastated that northern village. They are in need of donations. And while you're watching this show, there are some numbers on the screen for places that you can call and an email for Red Cross. Suggested items for donation are shower basins, shampoo, soap, toothbrushes and toothpaste, rags, hand towels, bath towels, diapers size 1, 2, 5, and 7, women's personal items. They particularly need clothing for 3 to 9 month old children size 5, tea, boys and girls, and winter wear for children and adults. Village residents depend upon subsistence and need to replace destroyed equipment including guns and freezers, food savers and bags, and other hunting equipment. For those outside of Anchorage, cash donations can be sent to any Wells Fargo bank branch. The American Red Cross is also collecting funds. Go to www.redcross.org. For residents of Anchorage, Northern Air Cargo will be delivering free freight to Hooper Bay for this week. For those willing to help, they're open until 10 p.m. This week only, please do your best and please help us help Hooper Bay. And now this week's program, which is a rerun, just a special airing so you can meet the people of Hooper Bay. One, two, three, four, let's go. It's hardly. It's a fabulous show. Alaska. I heartbeat Alaska. It's hardly. <laughs> Alaska. Pull up a chair and enjoy the show. You can hear it from Sitka to Barrow. Gather around for Jeannie's show. It's the alley you, the Indian and the Hello, everyone, and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska Native News and Information. I'm Jeannie Green. Thank you for joining us. Today, we travel to Hooper Bay, Alaska, a Yupik village that held a gathering recently, a gathering that shared their culture with the youth, a gathering that shared their culture with us. It's a great show. I've learned so many things I didn't know before. No one knows for sure when the first Yupik people set foot in the Hooper Bay area. But we do know this. It was a long, long time ago. Hooper Bay's current Yupik name means Stake Village People but no one seems to know why that is. Hooper Bay is located on Alaska's west coast, staring out at the Bering Sea. These rolling hills hold a secret. It's a hunter's paradise. Seals, birds, salmon, and other subsistence foods populate the area and fill the bellies of Hooper Bay's 1,100 people. Though, like many villages, the buzz of ATV motors, all-terrain vehicles, seems to constantly echo. Some people here remember a time when the village was much quieter. James Gump remembers those days. When he was young, he learned the old ways of hunting and fishing. As motors and guns and other modern things wove their way into daily life, many people forgot these old skills. James did not. Right. In those years, um, in that year, in, uh, in the winter time, every man they're busy making a um, paddle, sled, um, um, 
Uh, getting ready for uh, spring, getting ready for the uh, kayak, kayak frame, and put a new skin. Yeah, many of them. See, this is what the, they used to, they used to done this kind of kayak. Well, those kayak, yeah, they have a five skin. One, two, three, four, five in those years from the, from the younger Maklak. And then the full Maklak, Maklak, they put the one, two, maybe three or four. And sometimes when they, they covered with a seal skin, maybe seven or eight seal skin. Okay. Uh, every kayak has to be completed. Okay. It, I done this with a small set. When they, when they uh, drag this kayak, they use this small set under and drag it where they want to go. And then they ha always have uh, two barrels, one here and uh, one, one over here. And, uh, and uh, what they call the lichtik hook, that's a number one. And uh, this man, he just completed. Well, he holding a harpoon, complete harpoon, and he use a, a regular raincoat from the seal skin um, instant intestine. James Gump's models are realistic down to the smallest detail. They help explain the complex way the Yupik people crafted seagoing vessels from the natural materials found around Hooper Bay. This kayak. I mean, the seal skin, those um, men, they put 10, 10 skin, 10 uh, full mucklock skin to go back in uh, one, two, three, four, three, maybe, maybe 10 of them. See, see this, um, before they covered, see, this is a um, frame. The frame is, um, Done this frame, I done this the way they used to do, with no, with no nail, no screw, only with a skill, seal skin. We just learned an awful lot about kayaks, the skin boats used by the Yupik people of Hooper Bay. Now let's learn about the traditional tools, tools that were lifesavers in many cases. When I talk to the student in the, um, this, uh, this got to be um, kind of a ivory or a piece of, uh, uh, from the reindeer or antler. And, and this one need to be, uh, got to be that kind of stuff. Okay, when they done this one, they have to done this one, when they use it, it got to be on this side all the time, see them. The pointed end was used to test the thickness of the ice as a hunter walked along. One, two, three. They used to tell us long time ago, they got to have this need to be done. You know, just in case uh, one of the seal hunters, <clears throat> when he's sitting on the ice, <clears throat> And uh, when he, yeah, little walk over that the wind might blow the kayak. But he have to have this one with him all the time. Even when he uh, leave a little kayak that much or, or anything. So just in case for this, they done this one, when that kayak is floated, they have to get that get his kayak. Well, this, it got to be, see, this one got to be pulled and this one untied and tied. And then they, when they jump into the water, when they swim it, they have to buy this one and swim it and swim it. 
and shoot he can when he uh, he can he can he his kayak in somehow he can uh, try to make to the to the ice and when he to the ice and just and pull it up. That's a very important in those days. This what they call nanakpak. They used to have a seal skin. They never that time those days no nine no nylon. These two nanakpak, see these uh, bottom right here, and then the when they look for look for the seal, or when they chase the ice, I mean the chase the seal skin. They can get ready for this one. Okay, see this one. This is uh, made from the water's bone. This is from the ivory. This is seal skin. And uh, the wood is made from the drifted wood. And they have uh, three feathers. Okay, these colors, the color made from the surface. Long time ago, they found, I don't know how deep, under the ground. When they find it, those kind of the color gray, and then it's like a clay, something like a clay, color gray. And then uh, when they're going to use it, they have to burn that stuff mixed with something, with a fire. And then until it become orange or red, they stop it. The, this, is, this is a long time, maybe about 10, 15 years ago, I bought it from the Nelson Island. What they call this is a Eskimo color is Weeduk, Weeduk. See, very important. Okay, all right. This is Nanakbuk. Nanakbuk. The spear thrower was like an extension of the hunter's arm. It gave them the power to throw the spear further and harder. This is Nukak. All right. Whoa! Don't let that thing go in the house, James. We like this, and then he threw it to the to that seal. Sometimes hit that seal, and some of them missed. Okay, all right. James teaches more than the old ways of hunting and fishing. He's also a keeper of the old songs of Hooper Bay. That was. Tonight, James is not the only one singing. here at Hooper Bay, it's Cultural Week. It's a week set aside each year for the school and the village as a whole to focus on being who they are. It's a time for the youth to become more grounded in where they came from. It's a foundation that will give them confidence as adults. Thank <laughs> you. 
people of Hooper Bay gather together, and when they do, they not only share their culture with the youth, but they talk about issues that are affecting their people. This year, Cultural Week is bringing together more people than ever before. Recently, the village suffered a number of suicides. Now more than ever, coming together as a community and rebuilding relationships is very important. I, th I, I really do believe that the community needs to um, address their issues openly. If there's suicide, tell it like it is. If there's a, a problem in a family, if there's a problem within the, in their family members or school-wise, they need to address the problem because I really do believe that everybody that's in a village, in a community base, or as a village, or as a community, or as a region, everybody has a problem, whether it's financially, uh, family-wise, or they, they need to learn how to address that and ask or seek for help. That's a, that's not a weak thing, it's strength to ask for help. Alaska Natives and Indigenous people all over the world are coping with more suicides than ever in their history. No matter what culture you come from, the results of suicide are always the same. I know suicide in, in every culture or race and um, community in cities is, is by itself a real hard subject or event to face, but, but to leave it alone and thinking that you will go away and, um, or some other people will take care of it, um, thinking that it's just a simple answer is much, way much harder than, than the subject itself, the issue itself. The hardest part about living out here is uh, alcohol and drugs. Um, examples, um, need needless um, arguments just because a person was loud and drunk. Mm -hmm. um, that's what we don't need here in the village. And it, it affects the children and the adolescents. And in some ways, it affects their choices they make in their personal lives. It is usually teenagers or young adults that commit suicide, so we wanted to hear from the youth of Hooper Bay. Some do it because they're hurting, because people are picking on them, because something's wrong with that, this, because someone did something, told something, because they do, they, they just, they just, don't think of what's gonna happen. I mean, what, what, the, what will people think, you know? After someone does suicide, there's a lot of stories of how they did this and that, and we don't know until we find the real answer. It's pretty tough. And sometimes just keep thinking, and just thinking crazy. And, but just from all this, I just think about it, and to think and do nothing. Think about my relatives and friends first. And then I know they really care and stuff, so I don't want, I don't want to be involved with anything. And nothing crazy. I couldn't take it anymore. I feel like I want to do it myself, but uh, it's one day at a time. And I think about it here and there. And I had my sister who killed herself. That was kind of hard. We can go to counselors, elders, parents, anyone we trust. Even though it's just our friend, our little brother, we can, we can just turn to him anytime. Because I know my friends are there for me when I have my problems, my hard time, my family members, my friends. I trust them the most at times like that. And turning to anyone you trust is OK. But if you don't trust them, don't go to them. I just think about it and think about my little brother and sister. 
they look up to me and I look down to them and think about their future. Don't want them to have an older brother with not not with not there, and I want to be there for them. Just stick with them if they're ever thinking of suicide thoughts. If they want you to go away, just don't go away. Just stick with them the whole time they're going through this. There are hard times. While experts point to many causes for this sad trend in Alaska villages, Hooper Bay is doing something about it. gather the village, the young boys or young girls, and talk to them about the way of life, um, communication, communicating with them openly, and addressing the issue that they have. And um, I think that's what we need to do more and more. It would be good that if they would share a lot of times with their elders, uh, that way they can learn um, what, what they need to um, what they need to survive on when it comes to personal problems and personal issues that um, an individual or a family has to face. Uh, we had prayers and we sang songs and we had testimony and basically songs like a worship gathering for the community. We needed that because everybody was against each other. They felt like Everybody was going against, just drifting away from God. I, I think it's a learning experience, um, spiritual awakening. Um, I think we can work more and more. This is the first time they have this, I think. It's also the first time they've had this. A simulated plane crash in the middle of the village. First a plane taxis into the village. Then the volunteers get ready to play victims. Each victim pretends to have a certain injury. Parents, you got cracked ribs. Walter, you got the femur fracture. Man, I'm tired of having the major injuries, man. Well, you got it. Oh, my leg. The first to arrive is the village VPSO. Like we had a drill <laughs> at the middle of the town that was, uh, we pretended it was like a airplane crash. We had the search and rescue, fire department, health aides, cops, kids. There was lots of kids. We had like at least nine or ten patients. Through exercises like this, Hooper Bay is learning how to take care of its own during a crisis. And through Cultural Week, Hooper Bay is making its people stronger. When the young people here look out across the steely gray winter tundra, they see more than an empty expanse. They see the land that their people have walked on for thousands of years. This is the week for the youth to build a bridge to connect them to this land, connect them to their proud ancestors. A fish hook, a string of beads, a dance. They are more than mere objects. They are tangible connections to the common strength we all draw on as Native people. Thank you everyone for joining me for Heartbeat Alaska Native News and Native Information. I'm Jeannie Green. Every week we travel around the state of Alaska to remote villages, gathering news and information to share with you. And we hope that you enjoy our program. Thank you once again for joining us. Join me again next week. God bless you. We'll see you then. There are some numbers on the screen for places that you can call and an email for Red Cross. Suggested items for donation are shower basins, shampoo, soap, Toothbrushes and toothpaste, rags, hand towels, bath towels, diapers size 1, 2, 5, and 7, women's personal items.
they particularly need clothing for three to nine month old children, size five, T, boys and girls, and winter wear for children and adults. Village residents depend upon subsistence and need to replace destroyed equipment, including guns and freezers, food savers and bags, and other hunting equipment. For those outside of Anchorage, cash donations can be sent to any Wells Fargo bank branch. The American Red Cross is also collecting funds. Go to www.redcross.org. For residents of Anchorage, Northern Air Cargo will be delivering free freight to Hooper Bay for this week. For those willing to help, they're open until 10 p.m. This week only, please do your best and please help us help Hooper Bay. <laughs> Can you hear me? Can somebody please scratch my back? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 